in this presentation we're going to see yet another asset of process which is thread So we have seen three other kind of assets at the space which provides the ground for actions or doing things. Binary provided the instruction for what act or what exactly to be done. So binaries contain CPU instructions. Handles provide resources to act upon like file, registry, mutex, semaphore, tokens etc different system resources where objects are in the kernel and finally the threads actually do the action threads are entities in windows which execute instruction on the cpu in an operating system like windows threads are the only entity which are capable to do things in the operating system. In Windows, process does not execute anything but threads does. In Windows, process is just the address space where the thread runs. Let's take a Hello World application. When you start the application, the process address space is created. So the process is just created. Once the address space is created, the program binary is loaded into the address space. The code obtained from the Hello World application is loaded. Then a thread is created and the thread start execution from the entry point of the application. In this case, we can think of it as main, although there are a couple of functions called before that in the case of thread. But we assume that uh, the thread start the execution from main you can create additional threads if you want using create thread api which we're going to discuss shortly but this is the initial workflow of starting off a hello world application now from the thread you are calling print off to print hello world and it gets printed on the console as i mentioned thread executes nothing else executes CP instructions. Operating system uses the concept of thread to time slice CPU between different programs in a multitasking operating system like Windows. In Windows, every healthy process has at least one thread. As I mentioned, the default thread of a process is created at the time of process startup. We can create additional threads in the process from the main thread using the API create thread. So let's see a demo. So we're going to see the threads are running in a process using process explorer. Then we're going to see some of the threads running in the debugger. So this is uh, the process explorer again. Just I'm going to select a random process say this particular SVC host. So there are different tabs in the process explorer. Out of that, uh, I'm going to select threads. So we can see the threads here, which is inside the process. So every thread has a stack, which we're gonna discuss later. If you double click on that, you will see the stack of the thread. My symbols are not set correctly for process explorer so this is what you're seeing is obviously an incorrect stack so these threads are the user mode threads of this process if you want to see the kernel mode threads you have to go into the system at the space so these are the kernel mode threads which is common to all the applications just like in the case of binary or even handles for that matter so this is a visual studio which is being debugged. 
to see the threads of this process, um, all you have to do is uh, type the tilde command. So there are 41 threads in this process right now. If I want to see a uh, one particular one particular thread, say for example thread number 11, I can do tilde 11s in the debugger. So I switch into that thread and if I do the k command I can see the stack of that thread. If I wanted to see uh, the stack of all the thread the command is tilde star k. So we have seen this demo and that brings us to the summary. So we have seen threads as an asset to process and threads actually does things inside a process which means threads execute CP instructions. Threads runs inside the address space. Threads cannot access outside the address space. And we're going to have a very detailed presentation series on threads because threads are one of the most complicated topics when it comes to programming multi-threading, thread synchronization, etc. That's about the presentation. Now, reviews, comments and suggestions I would like to take from one single location. So if you don't mind, I would like to follow this particular pattern for the reviews and comments. Unfortunately, it is not really useful to me if you update the YouTube comments as YouTube is just one way we publish content. Now, if you think you need more personal attention or have some in-depth doubt or need some more training, please feel free to follow these links. Also, please refer someone if you think they can benefit from similar trainings. All services are available online as well as direct classroom training. So that's it. Thank you for watching. See you next time.